You're listening to The Angry Designer, where we cut through the industry bowl to help frustrated graphic designers survive and thrive. So, so needless to say, um, when I get you know stressed out, mm-hmm. when I try to re-gauge what the hell it is I'm supposed to be trying to do, yep. um, I tend to go back in history. I like I I, I I like looking at designers of last century. Yes. Okay. Which is fucked yeah. to say because that's yeah. actually not even that long ago. Yeah, I know. I know. Maybe I mean, it is. I, you know what, dude? We probably have it's... listeners who weren't even <laughs> born. born la- yeah, oh I know. my god, we I do. Know, I know. <laughs> Okay, long, long time ago. <laughs> but needless to say, yes. you know what? I mean, some of the greats, in my opinion, some of the founders of this space, this industry, I mean, graphic design has been around technically for thousands of years. Yeah. You know, you could argue this, you know, with hieroglyphics and all this crap. But mm. the reality is the graphic designers we know of, you know, really came to life, you know, mid last century. Yeah. And so I, I, when I question myself or when I need sort of advice, you know, of course, I, I, I reach out to other people. But I also like looking back in history. Yeah. I think that's important for us to keep moving forward. Yes. And of course, that's where we are today. Yeah. Because in looking through this, in, in thinking, did I fuck up my process? What am I doing? You know, do other people have process? And you learn about all these other people. And so I reached out and, and I started, you know, learning again and refreshing my mind about one of my favorite graphic mm. designers of mm. last century, yep. Mr. Paul Rand. Ooh. Right? Very nice. And, yes. and, and it's cool Legend. because, I mean, Paul Rand, again, huge for last century, mm. right? Probably one of the most famous corporate designers of all times. Yep. Everything from his beliefs to his attitudes to who he's worked with, the brands he's worked with. And um, and going through all this, I don't know how I missed this, but Paul Rand had a seven-step logo test. Ready? Oh, my God. Seven-step <laughs> logo test. <laughs> there we go. There's, the There's that song. song. There's the theme song for that. <laughs> I'm going to put that in your head, Sean. <laughs> Oh, it won't go anywhere. It's there for the rest of the night. Singing that one all day. I don't know what's wrong with me. Paul Rand's seven step logo test. But needless to say, even he had this way of gauging. And I mean, and again, I had this. And and in our process, and generally, you know, we show customers this and we rank our concepts and what their thoughts are against this. Sometimes you hit a brick wall like me fucking apparently today. But, you know, it, it was cool to see that even someone like this Mm -hmm. someone who you respect you admire you just completely overlook something like this yes and he had something like this that you know worked and again we'll talk about it but fucking awesome yeah so i would think that this guy would you know be out in his backyard and is picking up awesome ibm logos Mm. next logos out of the bush you know what i mean right and that's exactly no he has a process he has a process well he's got his own process he's got but this is yeah again it's fucking amazing okay so so if anybody doesn't know yeah. Mr. Paul Rand. Yes. Okay. One of the most famous graphic designers of last century. Mm-hmm. Okay. Still a living legend. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was fucking designing for over 60 years. Oh. Yeah. He had a 60 year career. 60 year 60. career. 60. And this is what we keep talking about. Like, I mean, it is fucking possible. Wow. Okay. He was obviously a revered expert. People, mm-hmm. you know, people go out of their way to hire him. And yep. he had some, and we'll talk about that a little mm-hmm. later, of course, yep. but he was an expert in his field. Yeah. He was the man. He was the bomb. He did editorial designs. He did ads. And of course, he was most famously known for his corporate identity, for his yes. corporate work. Yep. Okay. He was born, per- I don't even know how to say this, Peretz Rosenbaum. Peretz. Oh, Peretz Rosenbaum. Peretz Rosenbaum. Oh, wow. Nice Jewish boy, yeah, right? Jewish boy. Um, yes. August 15, ni- he was born August 15, 1914 in Brooklyn. So again, Brooklyn dude. Brooklyn. Right? So that explained his hard edge, right? Because he was. He was kind of like, <laughs> All right. you know, he was. He had, oh, had, he yeah. did have a really good edge to him. Yes. So, and, and again, the nice thing about this guy is, it, although he was, you know, one of the most famous corporate designers, and he did actually go to design school, mm-hmm. okay? He went to the Pratt Institute, oh. okay, of Parsons School of Design. Ooh. Okay. Was he a big fan? Um, well, no. And that's the funny thing, because even though he did go to design school, mm-hmm. he always considered himself being a self taught designer uh, see and that's fucking amazing yes, so i don't know what kind of bigger slap okay i slap my college experience yeah. so i was like but he, yeah. this guy actually went to it did it and he's like no no Oops. even though you taught me all this yeah, i'm self-taught yeah, i knew this shit anyway <laughs> right? but it's true he said he learned nice. from like looking at other people's work right which is crazy because so many people in our space are scared to do that. Mm. They're all thinking that, you know, they're going to be, you know, plagiarism, this, that. But again, it's it's, it's looking. That's how you learn. Yes. By look, and again, 
perfect example. Like yeah. Paul Rand is a legend, mm-hmm. right? You don't see people being like, oh, he ripped off so and so stuff, right? Yeah. He learned from greats. Yes. So he became a great. He taught yeah. himself by looking at like European magazines, posters, um, like all kinds of stuff. Like he, he really brought that whole simple look to the whole, the whole mid century, in yeah. my opinion, is just he epitomizes all oh, of totally. it. Totally. Yes. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Just ser- researching this and looking through all his logos, you're just like, oh my god! Right, like, it's just such beautiful stuff. It's beautiful, it's, and some of it you could tell the almost a decade that it was from. But I mean, that's not a bad thing. No, it's not at all. But yeah. a lot of it is still. I mean, again, if you look at a lot of the logos, that number one, one of them is still in existence. Yes, the IBM logo. IBM is that still. Is, I, you look at that and you think. Holy shit. Like right. That's and he really, did that. Yes. Like 60, 70. Yeah. Years. Like insane, Crazy. right? Crazy. And so he did that. The UPS logo, more mm. or less, still has the same look, feel. Yep. Yep. It's been modified a little bit, I think, for the times. But yep. again, you, you can't question. You see where it came from. It came mm-hmm. from him, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the Westinghouse logo still being yes. used. Yes. Um, ABC, more ABC. or less, still. The funny thing is ABC went back to a simplified version, which looks like more like the original Paul Rand version than their wow. cheesy like yeah. 90s yeah. version when they win all like you know skeuomorphic yeah, and it's yeah. like look we're right. flat but we're really looking like we're 3D guys <laughs> popping out of the TV <laughs> so it's like you know he's responsible for that IBM yes. Enron Westinghouse right mm. um and and of course the most questionable one that I think everybody kind of is like, yeah, what did he do there was his next logo for Steve Jobs. Is it bad? It's not bad. Well, I don't think it's good, but it's not. It's interesting. It's though. interesting. I feel it's very, um, very of the times. Yeah. I don't think it resembles. I mean, again, his thought process and leading up again, that was that one that I'm like, you know, mm. am I like going to be outcast if I said I don't get it? Yeah. And I get it. The box, the next the box. box was a black box. Yeah. He yeah. made the logo look like a black box. Um, the next font, I, I, I didn't think it suited it. But again, he he believed he was right. Mm-hmm. And again, uh, hey, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Not gonna, no. I'm not going to question Paul Rand, <laughs> yeah. but I still yeah. scratch my head occasionally <laughs> on that logo. And that logo will come back up in a little bit. We're going to oh, be okay. talking about oh, that a little bit, right? Good, good. But for the most part, the logos that have been out there haven't been changed. Like, yeah. if you see a lot of the other people, you know, like Massimo Vignelli's American Airlines, that was uh, changed to the time. I, know. I disagreed with it, yeah. but it was changed. Yeah. You know, a lot of the greats, but his stuff has, you know, barely been touched in all these examples. So, again, yeah. he believed that, you know, good design should be functional. It should be practical. It should be aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. You know, uh, th- good designs should be timeless. Yes. Right. And enduring. Like these are the kind of things that we still believe and preach. Mm-hmm. And again, not to be like, well, I do, uh, I do what he does. Right. <laughs> but you know, it's funny. It, it makes you feel like, okay, it really wasn't my fault. It was yeah. this other guy's fault. When you start comparing what your beliefs are on a daily basis, your practices are. Yeah. And then you, when you gauge them against someone like this, and you're like, wow, there's a lot of similarities. We feel a lot. We gauge whether it was I learned from this mm-hmm. and it just became part of my subconscious, which yep. became part of you know our ethos or what have. So yep. it, it's a good compliment in that sense. Yes. So it, it kind of makes you realize that regardless what the hell that CEO was smoking and what yeah. he's asking <laughs> why for, he was doing this, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, ultimately, you know, in that in that case, you know, I also believe Aaron Droplin in the sense that you know the customer, it's it's the customer, the customer is right. It's their job. It's their logo. Ultimately, you know, you're there to try to help guide them, inform them, but ultimately it's theirs and we're doing this for them. But there's something to to be said about a kid from Brooklyn would say, (laughs) fuck you, get the hell out of here. You know what I mean? So maybe there's a little geography going on here. A little grumpy old We're Canadians. (laughs) You know, we're kind of nice. We're We're, we're, we're known for being, (laughs) okay, yeah, sure, okay, okay, guys. But if we were from Brooklyn, you'd have probably told that CEO to fuck off, right? Oh shit! Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, because this guy's got a bit of an edge. Well, too, he which does, is, which and, is kind of cool. And and that's, but you know, in all fairness, I think a lot of his edge. So a lot of his earlier stuff wasn't as documented. His whole process is as more the later stuff, right? And his later stuff, one of the things that he um, believed, which we're not going to talk about today too much, 
but we will in the future because mm. there's a whole other episode mm. from Paul Rand <laughs> I really want to touch on that I think people will appreciate. Yes. But um, one of the things he did talk about is the importance of your self-brand. Yes. Which is why he ended up changing his name, changing his name right. and, and built out who he was. Mm. So in the end, when he dealt with people like Steve Jobs or any other, you know, obnoxious CEO, yep. he was like, no, 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 you know. I'm the guy yeah. and you're hiring me. You do yeah. whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. But if you want me to do this, you yeah. do it my way. Yes. And that is part of, that was part of the Paul, Paul Rand brand. Yes. You know, and again, yeah. you have these funny stories about him just kind of being like that grumpy old grandpa, <laughs> you know, and like, you know, there's videos of him like waving somebody out of a back, you know, backing out of a, of a parking lot. And they're like, yeah, he just looks like somebody's grandpa who's annoyed. And he's just like, come on. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, a little further. A little further. Beep, beep. Yep, yep, yep. I designed the IBM logo. Yeah, come on back. Come on yeah. back. He's got his pants hiked up to yeah, his exactly. like to, to his chest. You know, the belt just underneath his nipples. But um you know, again, again brilliant person nonetheless, right? Yes. Joker or not, you yes. know, and his brand, he's he obviously he's he's still you know revered, talked about studied today oh, yeah. very much. Oh yeah. Right. So um Paul Rant had Four design principles yes. that he followed. Nice. Okay. And again, um, we got some awesome quotes and what they are here, these which are again, good. brilliant. These are from the mouth of the yep. legend. Huh. So let's start by, by chatting about these before we get into Paul Rand's seven step <laughs> logo test. <laughs> I'm gonna get like a xylophone. I can't even <laughs> say that. In a straight face before we get into Paul Rand's seven step logo test. So the four design principles yes. he tried to follow. Right. Okay. And, you know, with his words, design principle number one. Yes. Okay. A logo derives meaning from the quality of the thing it symbolizes, not the other way around. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, again, brilliant. Yes. And it makes so much sense. And the thing is, this is 50, 60, 70 years ago. He's mm -hmm. coming up with these things. Okay, we'll say 50, of course. Yeah. He's coming up with this stuff. Yeah. And it's also relevant today, but it's always overlooked. This is true. He says, it's only by association with a product or service or business or corporation that a logo takes on any real meaning. Mm. If a company is second rate, yeah. the logo will eventually be perceived as second rate. Yes. It's foolhardy to believe that a logo will do its job immediately before an audience has been properly conditioned. Conditioned. See? Oh. So he, even before branding was yep. a thing, right? <laughs> he was but all over that. He <laughs> was all over this shit because he knew it. He's yeah. saying, listen, like, don't don't fool yourself. Yeah. A logo is, you know, as important as it is, yeah. it's nothing compared to, you know, everything else that's going to, it's supposed to be after the fact. That's right. Which is incredible. Like, he basically yeah. summarized brand before it even existed here. I wonder what he thinks of, I wonder what he would think of Enron now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's a You're great right. logo. You know what? We and I'm curious if he was still alive because he passed away I, in '96. Yes, when so did that, that Enron before, fiasco? Oh, that was like like ten years ago, twelve years. It ago. It was like right. Yeah. So poor guy, right? I know. Good thing he never saw that. But it's just like it's such a great logo. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I know, like, right? Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> there goes my logo. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, again, it's incredible. So, so it's like kind of not putting any more um, emphasis on the logo, yes. you know, because it's it's not up to the logo. It's up to everything else around the logo, the brand, right, which the brand. is key. Yeah. And we always prophesize this, yes. right? Oh, yeah, big time. So number one, that design principle. Number two, okay, the only mandate in logo design is that it be distinctive, memorable, and clear. Ooh. Surprising to many, the subject matter of a logo is of... Is of relatively little importance and even the appropriateness of the content doesn't always play a significant role. Otherwise it can look, it can look like whatever you need it to. It doesn't have to directly. What he's trying to say here mm. is don't read in too much about a logo. Don't have to try to read in and make a logo explain every facet of a company uh, because that's not the job of the logo. The right. logo's job is not to sit there and tell an entire fucking story about right. the company. Right. All it needs to be is distinctive. Right. It needs to be clear and it needs to be memorable. So people try to make logos so deep into like Steve Jobs' very first, you know, logo about yes. Isaac Newton He's sitting underneath the tree. Literal. Yeah, yes. right? And it's just yes. like, dude, nobody's going to read into yes. this. Yes, exactly. You know, yeah. or people like try to tell the whole company history within a logo. With just it's the like, logo, yeah. Dude, that's not the logo's job. Yeah. Yeah. So don't make it, don't give it that kind of importance yeah. or emphasis and, and make it work as hard as it is. Right. So right. that's number two. Mm, that's good. Design principle number three. Presentation is key. Mm. This one's important, right? Oh. This one, and this will come back 
afterwards as well, okay? <laughs> How to present a new idea is perhaps one of the designer's most difficult tasks. Everything a designer does involves presentation of some kind, not only how to explain, present a particular design to a listener, but also how the design may explain itself in the marketplace. Okay. So again, it's just on its own. The presentation part is huge yep. that he'll go on here, right? Yep. On its own, it's only going to do so much, but it's everything else that backs up that logo. Again, yep. The branding he's talking about part. branding here. So right? he's crazy. so prolific when it comes to branding. He is yeah. not only the godfather of you know corporate design, but yeah. he could very well unknowingly be the godfather a of brand. brand. I yeah. mean, again, because everything he talks about Jeez. is so much bigger than just the logo. Yeah. But he recognizes that the logo is a very important identifying mark of a company. Yeah. It has to be memorable, but it's not the only factor, yes. right? Because people are always like, oh, a logo is a brand. It's like, well, well, no, yeah, no, a logo is no. only yeah, yeah. a part yes. of the brand. Yes. Simplicity is not the goal. Mm. It's the byproduct of a good design and modest expectations. <laughs> okay, so that one made yeah. you scratch your head a little bit, right? But yes. then again, he understood the value of simplicity yeah. in logos yes. and made sure that it was in everything he did. He didn't do anything that was very complex, right? right? And so although... Minimalism is a really recent term now, and it's like the hot thing right now. Even in yeah. some ways, not even so good. Um, mm -hmm. Simplicity has always been central to how he went about things, and right. so by he saying modest expectations, right. it's like, look, don't you know, the, don't expect the don't, logo to be crazy because it doesn't have to be yes, exactly right. It's just let it let it do its job and yep. let it do its job at its most minimal level, and that's right. what makes it you know. So again, that's what makes simplicity the byproduct. Yes. Okay. Of good right. design. Right. So, and I think that. That's um, oh, man. That's like, you know, I, I, that goes across all I know, design, in my I opinion. Know. Right? Like that's Simplicity heavy. is the byproduct of a good idea with modest expectations. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know that's high, that's heavy, but it's really cool it's to think so about, true. right? Yeah. yeah. So these are the basic four principles that he, you know, incorporated in all of his work yep. and how he went about things, right? And this is what turned him into the godfather of corporate identity. Um, and again, we're talking, you know, by following this, he was doing work for IBM. He was doing work for AB ABC, Westinghouse. I mean, he was the guy. Yeah. And again, you know, he was very modest himself. Mm -hmm. He worked his ass off starting from the bottom and just, and became this. Yeah. Right. And so, um, to the point where he was kind of like, you know, one of the first celebrity designers. <laughs> yes. So much so yeah. that... Steve Jobs. Mm, okay. So now this is where we Jobs. bring back good old Steve. Okay. <laughs> so much so that, you know, Steve Jobs, you know, went public by saying he was the greatest graphic designer that ever lived at the yeah, time. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, in 1986, after he got ousted from Apple, mm -hmm. right, with a shit ton of money, mm -hmm. right. And he went and started this other company. Right. Right. He wanted Paul Rand because he respected Paul Rand. He, he respected it. But Paul Rand was contracted at this point. And this was, again, 86, Paul Rand was not a young guy. He was like already what in his like late 60s, early 70s, yeah, right? Totally, yeah. And um, but he wanted the best yeah. to work, right? And Steve Jobs was a pretty arrogant dude. It's more arrogant <laughs> when he was young than he was old, apparently. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, this was somebody that he respected for whatever reason. And Steve jo uh, and, and sorry, Paul Rand was working for IBM at the time. He was uh, contracted, contract contracted by <laughs> And Steve Jobs was like calling up the president of IBM. And yeah. he's like, you know, come, I, on. come on, I need to do this. I need, and I think it was either the president or the CEO or the vice president, whatever, is like, you know what? Arguing with Steve is futile <laughs> because the dude will just not stop. And I have to let this happen. I have to let Paul Rand help Steve on this job because Steve will never give up, which is fucking incredible. Oh my God. But that's how bad. And so... Put yourself in the mindset, right? Like, yeah. you know, he was, Steve Jobs was like one of the most arrogant people out there, period. Yep. Especially at the time. And he was at top of the world and he really wanted this dude, okay, who was basically the blue, he brought the blue collar yeah. to graphic design because it was just, it was his whole personification. It was, yeah. you know, how he was, how he acted, how he worked, right? Mm. He was very much, you know, like just mind to hand to paper, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, he commissioned um, Paul Rand. For a hundred thousand dollars back in mid eighties, oh, okay, which would probably be close to a million bucks now. Probably, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking, yeah, right? Yeah, I would think so. Um, because houses back then, mid eighties, early eighties, you can get a house yep. for like forty grand up here. Yeah. So I mean, in comparison to what yep. it was, yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot, right? Yeah. 
And um, so he commissioned him 100 grand to create the visual identity for his company, Next, next Computers. Right. Okay, and this is kind of like that whole next after Macintosh, next yes. after Apple, because he was already <laughs> kicked out of Apple. This is what he was going to do. So, you know, he got the um, he got the approval to use Paul Rand. Yeah. He was able to, you know, he, he made in contact Paul Rand. He was like, all right, 100 grand, flat fee, yes or no? Yeah. Okay, good. And then he's like, okay, you'll get it when it's done. <laughs> Leave me alone. Oh. Don't fucking bother me. <laughs> Literally, like, see, so, so again, the most impatient oh, person in, in you know Silicon yeah. Valley, Steve yeah. Jobs, he's like, no, yeah. leave me alone, leave me the hell alone, you'll, me, get, you'll it get it when you get, get it, it. Yeah. right? Wow. And then, um, and then, and, and it's true, and it's it's they're not even rumors because again, Steve Jobs, there's a this. there is a really cool, and we'll put it in our link mm. in in the. Uh, uh, in our show notes, right? And yeah. you can actually go to some of these videos, right? And Steve Jobs, you know, you, there's a video, a great like 10 minute video. And it's all about Steve Jobs talking about Paul Rand. Oh, wow. Really cool video because oh. it was a younger Steve Jobs. Yeah. And you could just see he was really patient. And he, he was, he sounded like he was, he seemed like he was irritated at the, um, the person asking the questions to make him talk <laughs> about it. But he spoke about Paul Rand so highly, right? Yeah. So when he was asked what it was like to work with Paul Rand, okay? And I love this. He said... Mm -hmm. I asked him if he would come up with a few options, and he said, no. <laughs> yeah. I will solve your problem for you, and you will pay me. You don't have to use the solution. If you want options, go talk to other people. <laughs> That's literally what he said. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, it's like, shit. can I have more? Can I have yeah. more than one option? No. no. I'm going to give you one option that's going to solve your problem problem and he says that wow. like he says to solve your problem he goes you don't want to use it if you don't want to use it you don't have to yeah, you're paying me to solve your problem i'm gonna solve that I'm problem this. right this is what i do <laughs> you want options go anywhere else you already paid me for it so fuck you wow, so it was awesome. like almost like the battle of two titans at this point yeah. right because paul yeah. Rand was so he was so set in his ways and he, he had his brand he had nothing to lose and yeah. steve jobs you know, was, if anything, at this point, humbling himself to Paul. So it was fantastic. It was just incredible Maybe. at this point, right? So instead of giving him options, yeah. okay, instead of giving him three options and this and that, what he did is he came up, you know, he came up with this booklet, mm. approximately 100 pages deep, okay? And it was a document based on, you know, this seven-step <laughs> logo test. <laughs> but it was, it was basically, it, it had a seven-step logo test. Okay. And then it had the whole corporate identity built out. Yeah. And it was just like, look, you're an idiot. This is, you don't need any other solution. This will solve all your problems. Mm -hmm. And it really was a giant. Um, and also I found, I found a copy of this online as well. Oh, wow. Um, and again, it's not the full thing. It wasn't a whole page, a whole hundred pages, but it still probably looked like it had about 20, 25 pages, 30 yeah. pages. And you could see what he, what he presented, what he said, you know, how he, how he presented it. And I mean, by today's standards, I think now some of the stuff's more exciting. Yeah. But back then in yeah. this video, okay, with Steve Jobs and everything, it showed Paul Rand coming in there bringing the books and there was Steve Jobs and his whole team. And they were just like kids at a candy store. Yeah, They're like leaping through, through it. Book. They're oh, just like, wow. Geez. Right. So this is what, this is where it goes back to his whole concept about the presentation is key. Yeah. Cause in this case, mm. it wasn't what he delivered. Cause now, I mean, so many times right now, people are just delivering logos in an email. Yeah. There you go. What Big, you mistake. Big mistake. Big yeah. mistake. Right. Even us. When yeah. we when we present logos, we have a process. It's the whole thing. We set up that we set up the process. We talk about our principles, our our steps, and then we show the concepts and yep. we explain it. So we build the whole story around the presentation, yes. right? Yeah. And this is what he did there. He he did this whole presentation and it re it, it kind of revolutionized the whole logo design process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna share these with you. We're gonna talk about these. And again, it's incredible that these still stand up now yes right with oh everything that we're doing now like nowadays all the everything that we're seeing in the marketplace the way we're recommending to pitch it's incredible yes. this is legit <laughs> yeah and this is this is last century stuff right <laughs> this is stuff that's 50 years old yes and it's yes. still and it's stands. still relevant today. It absolutely. That, that's why it's fucking. It, it's beautiful, yes. right? It's amazing, right? Yeah. But I mean, again, it's he, he. He outlines these seven steps to gauge um, gauge a logo. Yeah. To determine its value, its quality, the simplicity, mm -hmm. the minimalism, the effectiveness of what he's presenting, mm -hmm. right? And he's got this. He's like, "Do you agree?" So it's kind of funny. It's almost like one of those games where he's like, "Well, Sean, <laughs> do you want to be successful?" 
<laughs> you must want to be successful. Do I push yes or no? You don't want to be unsuccessful, <laughs> yes. do you? So, okay, let's just exactly. say you're so successful. Yeah, 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 okay. And yeah. now let me ask you something. When in your whole path of being successful, <laughs> yeah. like it could almost set yes. people up for this. Totally. But it's true. Totally. Because but it, it makes sense. It makes sense because you need to make sure who you're presenting this to is in your frame of mind. Yeah. Right? They can't be like what I just went through and God knows what the hell he was thinking. And mm. maybe, you know, he was just in a shitty mood and, yeah. and he wanted, maybe he was, I don't know, beaten up at home by his spouse or something and he felt like you know he needed to have some quick wins i don't know right but the reality is it's like the reality is it's like you need to put them in your frame of mind and how to present yes and i think that's that's what this was all about yes and how he went about this so just as relevant today we pitch a a a similar way not not his way but how it applies to us and our customers yep. and i strongly recommend everybody should have a process of a certain take this one yeah do another Use one it this. doesn't matter yeah yeah exactly yeah because most of these things you know it's not exactly what we would do but there's a lot of the same kind of principles mm-hmm. that that always go along with so thing. um and so so a little more insight this is almost game like how he would do this uh, okay. because he had seven steps yeah Right, he would say for steps one to six. Mm -hmm. Okay, give yourself a score between one and ten. Oh, you know, take a look at it. Score what I'm showing you between one and ten. Oh wow! And number seven, question number seven, give it a score of one to fifteen for a total of seventy five points. Oh, and then he said, okay, so if it's sixty or above, yeah, it's a great logo. We're we're good. If it's under, where he got that number from? I don't know. Yeah. Paul Rand's mind. <laughs> who's going to argue with Paul Rand? But it worked for him. Yeah. And again, for a guy who's done some of the most iconic logos, mm. right, uh, of last century, how do you argue with this? Yeah, this is true. Yeah, yeah. How right? do you argue I know, with this? You know, you, I, and that was the whole point. He's like, here, come on, Sean, take a look at this. Is this... Mm. Yes. Give it a score from one to ten. Really, <laughs> really? Do you think yeah, it's a, anything think less that's than a, a three? Five? Come on, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> and see, this is why you got guys like Steve Jobs fanboying over you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I could totally under, I could totally understand that. This guy right. probably just oozed confidence. Absolutely, but he, he did, right? knew his shit. He knew his the, shit. That was the Absolutely. difference. Yeah. All right. So seven steps. Okay. Here we go. Seven steps to uh, you know seven step logo test. Step number one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is the logo distinctive? Hmm. Does it stand out from the crowd? Ah, Basically, right? Yeah. Distinctive means unique, different from everything else. So, you know, is it d- does it stand out from your competitors? Does right. it stand out from the marketplace? Granted, it doesn't necessarily have to stand out from every logo in the world, mm-hmm. but compared to your competition, it absolutely has to stand out, yes. right? And again, this is it has to be unique, you know. So. It, is your logo the right way different enough that people are going to recognize are you using fonts that are similar Mm -hmm. to your competitors or different you know these are all different things you need to ask yourself because you need to stand out from your competitors you need to stand out from the crowd yeah right super simple step number one is the logo distinctive step number two is the logo visible now I know that sounds silly. Because everybody's like, well, <laughs> can what do you I mean? see it? <laughs> can I see it? I'm opening up my eyes. But the whole point is it noticeable? Is it legible? Is yeah. it recognizable? Mm-hmm. Right? Accessible to everybody who sees it, no matter, no matter how they see it. And yeah. this is key, right? We talk about this all the time. Yeah. People nowadays are building logos using all these really shitty textures and drop shadows and oh. gradients and this and that. And the yeah. reality is, what are people gonna see? Yeah. Are they gonna see the logo? Are they gonna see all the flourish all the, and shit that you put on yes, top of the fucking yes. logo? All the makeup on that pig At all the makeup <laughs> on that pig this is exactly what he's talking about yes a good logo okay a good logo test to make sure if your logo is actually good is to make sure it actually works and is legible in black and white in black and white if you Here have drop shadows gradients you know yep. flourishes this that don't who knows what the hell it looks like in black exactly. and white and i don't care if anybody's argument is well it's never going to show up in black and white so what does it matter <laughs> the reality it is, will right yes it absolutely it will it has to have a foundation of good yeah. design and that's exactly what he's saying here right it, it needs to be clearly seen and and it needs to be felt i mean it's all encompassing right and seen without any trouble yeah you shouldn't have to try to squint to kind of make out this uh, yeah right or, not I, at all i think it's what yeah i think that's what yeah, it is but no no yeah so that's number two is the logo visible mm. okay that's step good. number three yeah. 
And this one is crazy because this we just did a podcast about this a few <laughs> months ago. But his variation is, is the logo adaptable? Oh, uh, yes. Right? There Which we is go. incredible. Yes. We talked about a responsive logo and yep. how this is the new thing and it should be the new thing. Yep. He's talking about, is the logo adaptable? Adaptability means that it works across a number of applications. And yep. for his time, you know, the applications are silly because they're a t-shirt, yeah. a coffee cup, yeah. a pen, <laughs> A notepad, right? But what we're talking about, you know, a truck, a road sign, like this yeah. is the shit back then. Yeah, yeah. What we're talking about is does it work as, um, you know, a, a favicon? Yes. Does it work in, you know, a social media profile picture? Yes. Does it work in mobile, in social, in print, right? Yeah. So again, yeah. it, it it literally applies the exact same way. It's the it's same thing. The medium's different. Yeah, the medium's different, which he would never have known. He wouldn't what have known. What the hell the internet was. That's right, because he passed away time. in 96. That's so that right. was yeah. all before this, cre- thank God. Yeah. That poor guy, if you yeah. saw the now. <laughs> I don't even know what he oh. imagine Paul Rand going to Fiverr. No. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this? Can you imagine? He would he would lose <laughs> he would lose his You ever mind. see that show? What's that? That yeah. Walt Disney show about the girl with all the emotions and oh, there's yeah. that guy whose head blows up. That's Paul Rand. Okay. Anger. That's yes. him. Short, he stocky, and he's permanent right, right. fire out of his head. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, is it adaptable? Number three. Brilliant, brilliant. Step number four. Okay. Yeah. Is it a lo- is the logo a memorable one? A memorable okay? one. Okay. So mm. the goal of the logo is to is to be unforgettable. Yeah. Okay. So they should be able to easily remember it after they walk away from it. Yeah. Okay. And this is interesting because again, how many times you're seeing logos right now? Okay, I get it. You know, the logos are getting so damn simple. You know, yeah. it's having the opposite effect. Yeah, you don't remember. I don't yeah. remember the Spotify logo anymore because I remember the old simple Spotify logo yes. that kind of looked like, you know, sound waves or quasi Wi-Fi. Like it or not, I yeah. remember that. Yeah. Now they just gone to now, a word mark. It's just a word mark. Yeah. Google went to a word mark. Yeah. Right. A lot of these companies are oversimplifying. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not fucking memorable yeah. anymore. No, I know. Right. And <laughs> that's the problem. At, yeah. at the same time, yeah. are these crazy ass complicated logos memorable? You know, you got these things you see on Fiverr with drop shadows and this and that and telling 20 stories all in a logo. No, it's too much. It's too much. The yeah. key here is that people need to, you know, see it and remember it thereafter. Yeah. Okay. They need to, to they, they need to try to feel, you know, what whatever it is that business problem is solved, right? Yeah. Uh, not even going there. I wouldn't even say that. I think it's just like, you know, I want a skateboard. You know, my skateboard broke, yeah. right? And so now it's like, well, I need a new skateboard. Mm. It's a really bad example, Sean. <laughs> but if you created a kick-ass yeah. skateboard logo, logo for a brand of new wooden decks yeah. that are made of a new composite that it is never going to break under mm-hmm. any stress, I put it in because the middle has got some sort of carbon, you know, layer to it and stuff. Yep. Then it's like when my deck breaks, yep. you're gonna remember I have that. a problem and I have to remember, oh shit, yeah. that guy that? had the indestructible yeah, skateboard deck. deck. Right. Right. And that logo comes to mind. Yeah. And that's where he was going with this, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not that you know you're gonna ingest logos on a daily basis for the rest of your life and remember this. Yeah. But it's when that time comes in your life, yeah. right? That you know, you have this problem, you gotta remember it. If the logo did the job right, you're gonna recall that. Yeah. And that's what he's calling about right here. Yeah. And I think his and I don't know whether it was, is it's the same kind of idea, because it's a little complicated, but his eye B mm. M. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that is ingrained the, into in everybody's head. head. It's complicated. Yep. But the message is like loud and I clear. know, right? You know like you mean? can never ever you, forget and those you never, names. Ever forget that and that's the funny thing. Yeah. Because exactly. he was like trying to remember these three initials. A lot of people are like, well, what were those three what, initials? Where are they? Yeah. As soon as you put an eyeball, a, a B, B, literally a yeah. B, and then an M, it's like, oh, okay. No brainer now. Yeah. yeah. So something like that. Yeah, that would help you remember whatever that deck company was that, you know. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> and that's exactly it. Yes. So it needs to be memorable so that people can easily recall it yeah. in the time of need when yes. they actually need it, right? right. Number 5, <laughs> okay? Is the logo universal? Mm. So this is interesting. Yeah. But equally important, right? Mm-hmm. So what he's saying here is does does the meaning of the logo translate across cultures, right. across languages? Yeah. You know, is it like think of it as almost is it like a, a global brand, right? Does yeah. it matter if someone in from the middle of Asia yeah. sees this, right? Or somebody in South Africa or somebody up in Alaska, right? Yeah. The logo should have that same kind of universal look, 
feeling memorability, right? It should yep. apply to everybody equally. And it shouldn't just be so reliant on one culture, yep. um, you know, one topic, one idea. It just, it should be simple and universal. Yes. So I thought that was actually interesting, right? That's very cool. Yes, totally. It should, um, I think what I got here is it should convey the same story, emotion, and brand worldwide. Again, he's on with the brand. Right? Again, yeah. so, I mean, again, well, no, I sucked that one in. Oh, you got <laughs> my own note. But, I mean, I give it to Paul, okay? I give it to Paul. That's great. Okay, <laughs> step number six. Yeah. Okay, we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. This is a good one. Is the logo timeless? Yes. Fuck, we, okay, again, I, I can't I, stress this one enough. I know, I know. Right? <laughs> you and, and he was quick to say, like, I mean, again, when people are trying to craft a logo, you don't follow fashion is what yep. he was saying, because mm -hmm. that was big back then. Yep. You don't follow trends. Nope. You don't follow the latest fonts, and he did go talk about that, right? Mm -hmm. Again, the whole point is you need it to be, you need it to be timeless. Yep. You don't want to follow the flashiest fonts, the coolest styles, you know, the biggest colors. So, again, the, the better, more classic that you have your logo that's actually you know built on good design principles on great design on great balance right yes. the longer it's going to last it doesn't need to rely on all the flash that's out there that's right and this is paul rand guys this is yeah, paul rand paul rand this isn't Mosmo. this isn't sean <laughs> this is an angry designer talk yeah, yeah this, this is our boy paul yeah. <laughs> yes he knew what he was talking about because look ibm still using his logo and they'll never no, not go why back. would the ABC went yeah. back to a more Paul Rand logo than what they did? Like they realized go. the error in their ways, That's right? right? Yeah, That's right. Absolutely. Those are timeless. And then, and then, when you have said yes to all these other things, mm -hmm. when you said, well, yeah, and yep. oh, okay, yeah, yeah. and yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, you got my six points. Step number seven, yeah. okay. Step number seven is the logo simple. Mm. Okay, and that was the big one, right? He's uh, he went you know public by saying logos should epitomize simplicity. Okay, yeah. should epitomize minimalism. Yeah. Okay, because again, it's like a he, okay his words: a logo cannot survive unless it's designed with the utmost simplicity and restraint, <laughs> and that's key. Because how many times do people keep adding? Adding, yeah. well, it's not yeah. flashy enough. Yeah. Oh, it's not this. Dude, if, it's, yeah, if, okay. if it doesn't work yeah. like that and you need to add a drop shadow, you fucked up. Yeah, it's not Plain good. Plain and simple. If, yeah. if it looks better only with a gradient, yeah. you know, because, you know, without the gradient, it doesn't look good. There's a problem, and right? It's not good. Exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. Simplicity is not the goal. It's the byproduct Product. of good design mm. with modest expectations ah, yes. right there so it is full yeah. circle full circle ah, ah. right so the the cool thing about all this is we can use these for ourselves you totally. can make your own list but yeah. the re the reality is he would put this into his presentation yeah. right he would give everything a score and again he's right from the beginning he's like hey if it's higher than a 60, it's good. If yep. it's, you know, 75 it's is the goal, whatever. That, You're all in agreement? Work. Yep. Okay, good. And again, it's that whole collaborative mindset. And right. I fucked up because I didn't. I, I, I missed didn't. my process. Yes. I was like, okay, well, you know, yeah. I thought I had cred with you. I guess yep. I didn't have cred with you. Yeah. Um, but again, in this situation, he did. Yeah. And this is how he set that credibility. And again, I, I, I gained that credibility with people I've never met. Yeah. Presentations, first-time CEOs, because I follow our process yes i present our process and i'm like listen this is how we do things this is how we write things and and you know and, and you can disagree but this is a and in the end they're like no it makes total logical sense so why would i disagree exactly and that's what he was doing here so that's why this whole next logo even though it's kind of questionable and i'm not 100 percent, i can't say i'm 100 percent. it's grown on me more yeah. over the years yes but it's still that cold, you know, scratching your head moment. Like, how the fuck did this? Uh... So, so was it a was Steve Jobs actually doing the box? Yeah. Was, so the box. So was, that's what it was. That's what the next box. That's what the product was. That's what the looked like. That's what it was supposed to look like. Yep. But to me, that's perfect. Then a little three D box with the funny word next. So okay. So one thing he did that I thought was kind of clever was um. So again, they were creating this box for the education space oh, okay. right and oh. it was supposed to be a whole other level altogether right oh. it's supposed to be a whole different level of computer you know unlike anything else that was out there well, that was the intent okay okay and the original company was named capital n and then next yeah paul Rand was like no 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 he made it capital n lowercase Lower e case. and then capital n yeah. capital t yes because he wanted the emph the emphasis uh, <laughs> on education on education 
He's like he, education. You think of Einstein. He equals MC squared. He, yeah, he's like that. AC. That that letter alone has a lot of credibility. So that was the clever part of what he <laughs> did in that presentation. Yeah. That he changed around how the letters were spelt, uh, or sorry, the the uppercase, lowercase, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And um and and he honed in on that. And then he represented the box. And Steve yeah. Jobs was in love with the design, the physical design of the box, of yeah. the unit, because it looked beautiful. Yeah. Unfortunately, they, they never really got to market. And it that never whole, did, did it. No, it didn't. It, they, they couldn't make the rest of it as beautiful as the outside. Mm. But the reality is it was enough that, you know, it, it, it got him where he needed to get. Yeah. It got him, you know, the, uh, I don't know, the... the the praise that he uh, Steve Jobs was basically happy. Yeah, and he, he didn't look at it and be like, "Oh, that's fucking yeah. shit!" Like everybody's yeah. waiting for Steve Jobs to um, trash it because he does that, and everybody that, that was his personality <laughs> to just flip. Yeah, he didn't. And he didn't. Yeah, he didn't because again, the presentation, the way you know Paul presented everything, who mm -hmm. he was, you know, the brand he built for himself. Yeah. Boom! This is what he did. Yeah. Jeez, you know, if I could, if I had a checklist, yeah, for that logo mm. with this with this seven step program. I think, I think it would hit all. It would check well, it all does. those boxes. It absolutely does. And again, I was kind of tweaking it and testing it myself. Yeah. And again, and I, and I said, and I've said it many times, I'm not the biggest fan of that logo, but it does check all hmm. these. And it was unique enough at that time. Yes. That it was different than anything else that was out yes. there. Right. It was yes. different enough from anything else yeah. that was out there. Yeah. And you know, oddly, again, this this computer would have been the com a competitor to IBM. IBM it would have been a competitor yeah. to Mac. It was what Steve knew. Mm -hmm. It was the world he was kind of building. Um, so it was kind of funny how it all played out for yeah. him. But again, I thought it was interesting to because this is this is he was just into the uh, peeking into the mind of Paul Rand. Yeah. How he did things, how he presented things, how yeah. he believed things, and how much of this applies today. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking think it was brilliant. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? Someday, you know, maybe 60 years from now, somebody's going to dig this stuff up and say, hey, you know what? This all works still today. And it will. It will. Because this is the kind of stuff that's timeless. Dude, absolutely. Well, and again, it's all it's all just like foundation. It's just good design. Start yes. to finish with yep. all of this. Exactly. You know, and again, it's all, it's good. You can say whatever you want thereafter. But yep. I mean, honestly, you follow this process. You will always get something strong for a company, a brand. But yep. The, the, the part I love about this is the expectations as well, yeah, right? Because, yeah. again, it's you, people need to understand that the expectations aren't that the logo is going to save your company. That's right. Right? Your company is going to save your company. Yes. The logo is that beacon yes. that will either say, yes, that's a great company, or, oh, that company sucks. Yeah. The logo is not responsible <laughs> for it. Your company is. Yes. That's why this guy was just like, he was so ahead of his time when it comes mm -hmm. to this. Because, again, you know, this wasn't even, the branding really wasn't a thing. It wasn't as far as thing. I knew, it was like mid, late 80s yeah. when it just started being talked about from what I remember. Yeah. Um, I don't physically remember actually touching the term brand until like late, late nineties, early 2000, to be yeah. honest. So um, that's why it's just like, wow. Like he knew it. He yeah. just, you know, he, he totally was the head of it all. That. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking cool. eh? Wow. It's really good. That's awesome, man. He this also, I remember, I also saw a little clip of him bitching about how, you know, everybody's trying to like dissect graphic design and, and all these. And I was just like, oh man, good thing you passed away in 96. <laughs> You didn't hear about UX, UI, experiential, fucking oh, you lost this software. Shit today, oh my huh? god, that, it, there's so many different subsets of design now. It's just it's like I feel like everybody's jumping on the wagon, and that's what he was going on about. It's true, right? Yeah. So was he kind of crotchety then? <laughs> was he think? crotchety, old yeah. man? Well, I can't. I can't actually say, but if you see the interviews, he's kind of like that. He's got that, an edge too. He's him. got a. He's got a cool edge to yeah, it. Yeah. He's not like Mister Happy. He's <laughs> not like you know. But but at the same time, I don't think he was. He just kind of reminded me of grumpy old grandpa. <laughs> a grumpy <laughs> grandpa, you know, that everybody loves, and they're like, oh, you. <laughs> Oh, Grandpa, he's yeah. on, his, <laughs> on his soapbox again today. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Yeah, that's funny. Well, all right. I think I think we touched enough here that on this one, really right? good, yeah. Um, I do, I again, I do want to tell everybody that we have a part two to this in yes. the near future, but not necessarily next week. Yeah. In case everybody place. hated what we said about Paul Rand today. <laughs> but there is going to be another Paul Rand episode in the near future, which I think is of equal, if not more um, 
Ah, uh, what can I say? It's also equally good. It's just as good, yeah. Because and in completely different stuff altogether. Yes. But just like wow, yeah. dude, yeah. like good this, on you. This dude, I mean. But I want to make sure I research this stuff enough um, yeah. on the next one because I think um, I think there's a lot of validity into this one moving forward oh, into the future of all big of us, time, right? Big time, yeah. yeah. This guy's a legend. There's he no, really is. There's no reason why we can't devote two episodes to him. Oh shit! Right? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm yes. surprised we didn't like just talk rant about it now for the next hour. <laughs> but really, be, I had a problem and I had to rant about my problems yeah, so this exactly. made me feel a little better about it but it this. does make you feel a little better right 100% it yeah, does it absolutely exactly. does and, and that's good so you know your processes are important and when you deviate from them ultimately you, you yeah. know shit goes sideways and it's really kind of sad right and our processes yeah. generally in our presentations we don't just we don't design on the fly nope right no we don't we don't sit there and and, and take these kind of requests haphazardly notes during the meeting you know right I mean? like, right yeah. we and we make sure that we present everything possibly yeah. you know we we lay out our groundwork our foundation mm -hmm. and we're like okay what you're going to see is going to be based on this 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 and this if you disagree yeah while we're doing it, you tell me. Yes. But I suspect it's not gonna. You're not gonna disagree because if you agree with these five things, yeah. then you're gonna agree with everything I'm gonna show you. Exactly. Didn't have that opportunity. I got I got blindsided. Yeah, and that's and bad. I'm paying for it. Yes. So again, just so you all know, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, shit happens. Yes. Exactly. I'm a little I'm a little bitter about it. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I'm a little bitter about it. Now, is it is it a, is there a way to show him examples of how it's gonna look? I'm in, still in trying. His... To, I'm still trying to figure this out. Oh, you are. I'm okay. still trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out if keep it's us, a... keep us keep me posted. Keep us posted. Well, I don't this, know. We'll be, see. We'll see how it happens. It's interesting a, to see how that this, plays out. So one thing, one thing I need to work on, and mm. one thing I don't know enough about yeah. is is the politics of the whole thing. I don't know enough about politics of business, politics, and sometimes there are certain things that are bigger than we are. Right. We can do everything right, and it's still going to play against us. Yeah. And I have a feeling that this is a situation where it's like it's more political versus um you know design versus you know good design principles right. i have right. a feeling yeah. and i'm still trying to understand you know um what that looks like mm -hmm. right because again this that's has been hey i've learned a lot of shit over the past 25 years <laughs> yeah. you know from just how to run the damn business to yeah. of course honing design skills to yeah. pitching to presenting to this or that yep Ah, <sighs> you know, it's like you can't get it all. I, I <laughs> politics. I never worked in a company, so I never understood the politics. This is it, and I only ever experienced it from the outside looking in. Right, and I know from a lot of the the DMs we get. I know from a lot of the comments we get. People deal with politics all a the lot. time. Yeah, and I think I think there's a, a huge topic to talk about here. Yeah. I just I don't have the knowledge for it. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll dig a little deeper, talk to some people about it, and see see anything. Because yeah, I think. I think yeah. that has a huge part to it. And you play into the politics. You totally do. You yeah. can be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I just haven't figured that one out. Yeah. Well, you're really personable, so you should be able to do this. <laughs> You'd be like and Bernie handsome. Sanders. You know? <laughs> and handsome. Yeah. He's like, hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah, hey, hey. all right. <laughs> just sing that song. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Seven steps, logo test. That's it. Why, why do I have to do that with my voice? It's, not a, <laughs> it's brilliant, though. It's like, you know. Oh. It requires it. That's it requires the, it. the simplicity of, of, <laughs> of what we're talking about. Oh, God. On that note, I got to finish this off before I do anything else more stupid. <laughs> I hope you guys like what you heard today. Yes. Please, by all means, leave us comments on our Instagram. Drop us a note on our YouTube. Um, you know, hit us up, DM, or you know, like, or comments anywhere, even on our website. Yeah, we try to get back to everybody. I'm almost caught up on all the Instagram um, comments. Ooh. Yeah, it's a little bit of a hard one. This one yeah. was over the holidays <laughs> and stuff. Um, but please, by all means, you know, like, don't be scared to reach out because we love reaching out to everybody. We love talking to everybody. We're doing this for you. Don't be scared more than anything to leave us a review. We've had some great reviews. I had an awesome, sarcastic review. <laughs> I don't know if you read it. And they're no. like, it starts off by, you know, she's all pissed off at us. About, <laughs> she's disappointed. And she's like, you know what? These guys aren't fucking angry at all. <laughs> right? <laughs> What the what? hell? Now I'm mad. <laughs> that actually made me smile. So I couldn't get angry at that, that one. I was like, ah. anyway, no. by all means, you know what? Um, <laughs> we want to reach more people. We And the only way I think we can get up ranking is is, is just by comments or or yeah. reviews on that shit. I hate to yeah. say it. This is the political bullshit. There, there you Apple's go. Apple's political Look bullshit. You. You're playing the game already. <gasps> yeah. You got this, See, man. I, yes, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's it, right? Yeah, dude, that was great. This okay. is a fascinating man. Certainly check him out. If you've never heard of Paul Rand, then 
Yeah. Here's your opportunity. Here's your opportunity. To and to, and to discover take, an amazing dude. And to take what he's done and use it for yourself. Yes. Honestly, I mean, you know, uh, it kind of worked for us when we fumbled across it. I was like, oh shit, he mm -hmm. did this kind of shit too. Actually, yeah. not the kind of, it always worked for us. It, yes. It always works for yes. us. Um, and again, it's just proof that, you know, if it works for someone like him and if it can work for someone like us, shit, it could work for you. Yeah. So, you know, do it up. Yeah. Do it. All right. Yeah. With that being said, <laughs> my name is Massimo. And my name's Sean. Stay creative. And stay angry. Peace.